So, um, most of you are aware that Kevin Hart's got a new special at the moment, right? It's called um something right on the way it's called it's a new special Kevin Hart has got on Netflix doesn't really matter he did it in his home it's quite an innovative way he did it um, in terms of you know making sure it's COVID safe and he kind of came out in his um, nightgown with some Jordans on you know uh, some pajamas sorry and Jordans on it's a really clever approach and the whole idea behind it was that oh, I'm going to give it to you raw unfiltered uncut whenever you hear someone saying that it's never going to be on raw raw and unfiltered uncut and unfortunately if you're Kevin Hart you just can't do that the level of celebrity and the level of star he is at the moment and the space that he occupies he's just unable to be the comedian that he probably wants to be in his head he just can't do it so whatever stand-up he thought he was going to achieve on that stage just didn't basically resonate with myself i just didn't like it too much again i'm not really one of those people that says kevin hart isn't funny point in blank because i think he's probably one of our best comedic actors out at the moment white or black doesn't matter he's really very much up there um you have to see some of the interviews that he does alongside of the rock you know filming jumanji how funny he is just generally on his instagram you know he's definitely a funny and humorous dude the movies of course that he does definitely usually finding humorous dude um sitting alongside on a podcast show that he does with the other red cup uh, boys and other people in these kind of organization he's just a generally a funny guy there's no way you cannot say it's not funny but in terms of stand-up and in terms of him emulating or following in the steps of people like you know david Chappelle and chris rock and these sort of people that he sort of looks up to he's just not going to be able to deliver on that level because you just he's too polished i guess that's probably the 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 negative side of it and he's very aware of who he is as a as a kind of celebrity and the position that he occupies and he's very careful to say certain things carry himself in a certain way but he also has this weird proclivity to be very sensitive which is not weird because you're an artist right you're going to be sensitive with your work but he's overly sensitive considering where he what he is as a comedian and considering how famous and rich he is because he must know right kevin hart must know that he's never ever gonna be patrice o'neill right but he's gonna be one of the he's gonna die one of the richest people one of the most famous people in comedy of maybe of all time right it's gonna be hard for somebody to reach the levels of famous that he has and you know box office hits on that malarkey so if that happens you're gonna have to i would assume being a celebrity or being an artist or at that level you'd have to come to a compromise and, a, and be willing to say okay i'm gonna give up one thing in order to get the other thing because you just can't have it all it's really hard and i would say somewhat impossible to be super rich super famous super well known in all the big kind of hollywood movies and also be an edgy comic or edgy or whatever or a comic that sort of everyone sort of loves on the underground that kind of like appeal just doesn't happen I'm assuming if Dave Chappelle did a few more comedic movies that were shit, he would definitely lose that luster of being like the well-regarded stand-up comedian. You kind of have to give up one thing. You can't just have it all. And I think Dave Chappelle, I mean, Chris, Kevin Hart is trying to have it all. And it makes sense because as a person, he's very motivated, very driven. He's always trying to get it, get everything that he wants, right? Drive and motivation and work hard. And he has a tendency to keep doing his work hard thing, which I guess Bert Kreischer mentioned on the uh, Two Bears, One Cave um podcast where he essentially said that that kind of working hard mantra gets on his nerves because i guess if you're a burt kreischer and myself included kind of coming from my side of artistry um working within the nightlife scene you know being a dj working as a promoter and doing all that kind of stuff it's very um what you realize in the arts for the most part there's no linear path to success everyone's got a different route right but it does require some lucky breaks to get where you want to get to in the arts right because for the most part the bar of entry is pretty low anyone can get involved so there's a lot of competition so with the fact there's a lot of competition you're going to just take longer to get there and you know there's going to be people of course exploiting you along the way you know bloody blah, blah blah but there is a lot of luck involved in you getting the thing that you want to get at the end of the rainbow right you being able to have a successful career make money support your family there's a lot of luck that goes into it yes of course it's your decision to go out do shows do guest spots uh go, do open mics whatever it may be do shows for free bloody blah, blah 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 but along the way you're definitely going to need some lucky breaks you're going to need a good network of people around you to you to get to the next level it's just what it is and i think most people that are mature understand that there are some people that are a bit naive and are a bit bitter and like oh how come he and she got there and i'm not there and i'm better than him like on with jokes or whatever yeah you might be better than him or her with jokes but you just haven't got the network you didn't have the lucky breaks that allowed you to make that next step and unless you recognize that you're just never going to make that next step but for kevin hart he's obviously had those over his career but he doesn't seem to recognize that those are probably 
as important or maybe more important than his work ethic. The fact that he gets up and does push-ups and runs doesn't necessarily mean anything if you don't, aren't able to capitalize on the opportunity, right? To star in a movie, to be a good guest on this show, whatever it may be, whatever break that he got along his career probably benef- um, impacted his overall ability to be the person that he is now more so than his ability just to kind of work hard and train and Bert Kreischer mentions it here in four on the podcast of two bears one cave and I'm going to play the clip for you here and I'm going to comment on the other side I'm not a joke is this premise about Kevin Hart where I was I don't want to fuck him but I was saying I'm tired of people saying they work hard like uh-huh. I'm tired of hard work being how why you're successful. Oh right, it's and I it, it just drives me nuts because I've worked hard my whole life, but I was unsuccessful at periods of time. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, but I'm busting my ass. And there are people that work hard that aren't successful. And I just was like, I'm trying to. I've been trying to a bit. And I guess I went off on this one time, and I was like, fuck hard work or whatever. I don't know. I, and I was like, talk about the times. I, I don't know. My point is, Kevin Hart's new special is awesome. I love Kevin Hart. <laughs> So you can definitely understand why Bert Kreischer or people would say something like that, right? Because I think he's probably more cognitive and more self-aware than most comedians within that LA comedy scene, even though he can kind of rub people up the wrong way. And again, he's not my cup of tea at all times. I sort of kind of, you know, dip in and dip out with the content that he puts out there. I think he's probably at his best sitting alongside Tom, sitting alongside Bert Kreischer, sitting alongside Bill Burr, sorry. They sort of balance off his sort of like... um he's sort of a frat boy in this like whatever he does better right i guess on his own he's a little bit too much to kind of deal with but in general i like him because he's really self-aware in the idea that how he kind of understands the kind of role that the whole taking of the t-shirt has played in his career he also understands the role that telling of the machine story has played in his career and he's also very aware of the role that him being friends with Joe Rogan and Tom Segura and all his people has played in actually his career and the fact that where he is at the moment he speaks very openly about you know the troubles that he had with a travel channel and getting fired from that and what he did secondly and going up da, 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 da. and these are all things that are probably contributing more so to his career than his actual ability to write jokes to go to shows to you know do weekends away from home to do triple runs like that that is the thing that that is the base level entry thing that everyone should be able to do now the only thing that i disagree with um but question is is i'd say i don't think everyone works hard i think that message of like working hard you get from like you know uh joker will nick yeah uh david goggins is quite important because most people don't work hard people think they work hard but they don't really work hard, especially for their dreams because it comes naturally so the idea that you'd want to work extra hard to achieve your dreams doesn't necessarily come easy to you because it's something you enjoy to do whether it's drawing you know performing stand-up you know whatever it may be right you enjoy doing it so you're not exactly going to go over you're not exactly going to go over your level of enjoyment to achieve that thing you're just going to do it to whatever level that you like to do it so when he says i was busting my ass in the beginning i'm not too sure again this is burke crash because again you know read between lines of what he speaks about he does obviously work hard in his marketing and get his brand out there especially you stand up now but to say that you just weren't getting forward because you're not working hard in the beginning, I'm not too sure about that. I think a lot of people don't work hard. So let's say he did. But regardless, he now has the opportunity to do what he kind of wants with his career. And he's obviously widely successful, you know, numerous Netflix um, specials. He's obviously got his show now, The Cabin on there on Netflix, and he's doing really well with his podcast. And like, you know, everything's on up and up for him. He's done some really cool live shows at the moment as well that have been going really well from the stuff I've seen online. Um, but he's very aware that being friends with certain people within the scene especially within the LA comedy scene has definitely helped being part of the comedy store definitely helps all these things and I'm sure there are different things that happened that led up to those things kind of coming to fruition and these are probably as important or if not more important than the actual work he does on the stage or working you know in and around comedy and it must get annoying when you're a Burt Kreischer and you know that you're a good comedian, but you also know that you're only successful because of these other breaks that you got to see someone like a Kevin Hart, just say to people naively that you just have to work really hard. And I think he is an example of Jay Larson. Someday he really rates us in his kind of social circle. I think, you know, he's got like, let's say 30,000 followers, or 50,000 followers on Instagram and Burt Kreischer's maybe on like, let's say 
500,000 plus. And in his head, he thinks this guy's actually a better comic than me or the same level than me, but he's not as successful only because he doesn't have these other extra things that happen to him along the way, right? He doesn't have someone like a Joe Rogan telling him or a Bill Burr telling him, hey, stop doing the flipping crappy TV show and just concentrate on your stand up. He doesn't have somebody like a Joe Rogan who put him in his podcast. He doesn't have somebody that can maybe put him on a show or a manager or an agent. All these things that sort of contribute to it. And again, I think, I don't think it's a bad thing for Kevin Hart to say they sort of messages to put them out there i think most of the time people don't work hard enough and they need to hear that message again and again work hard work hard because they just aren't going to do it and i also think it's just an easier message to sort of get them through the sort of get sort of the easier thing to lead with to kind of get them in and then you can they can start kind of figuring out what to kind of do in terms of maneuvering the industry and how to build a network and who to contact and where to go all these sort of things but i think if you bombard people with information with that sort of information in the beginning, it's going to overwhelm them and they're not, not going to know what to do. But if you just tell them to work hard and they're actually passionate about what they want to do, they're going to work hard to get in. And then once they get in, they'll figure out, oh, okay, it's not just about doing a million shows, you know, in a week. It's about where you do those shows, who you do them in front of, who you're doing them with, who's your community. I mean, it's, there's all these other things that kind of play into the actual ability to become a next big stand-up star or whatever it is in your other creative fields. But it's interesting because I think this is primarily primarily one of the reasons why there's definitely a bit of a, a bit of friction or a bit of separation between the West Coast and East Coast comics. Because I think from my assumption, from what I've seen so far, again, it's I think it's helped with podcasts because I think podcasts have maybe allowed most people to have an income, right? I think, but before podcasts, it did seem like the West Coast comics understood more this, um, the idea that it was about who you know that contributed, let's say 40% to your success um, than the East Coast guys. The East Coast guys seem to like believe if they just did stand up enough times, that they would eventually become the next big star. And I guess because, you know, it worked like that in, in the Esther years, but then it obviously changed with the internet. Things just moved in different ways. And the West Coast guys seem to kind of adapt a little bit quicker to that, which is why they all kind of appear on each other's podcasts. You know, of course, Joe Rogan's one being the biggest one, but that whole thing and, you know, putting people on different spots, doing little shows, doing little tours, that actually helped them become bigger people, bigger stars, maybe than their actual talent level. So if you're an East Coast comic, you're like, hold on, I'm a better comedian than this guy. But of course, that guy has been able to figure out how to network, how to get their he or she's name out there. And I guess now again we don't see much of a friction anymore because i think podcasting has helped everyone be on a level playing field everyone can make an income so i think you hear people complaining less but when people weren't making money or the people when a lot of people weren't making money and it was only the money was being held within the small uh segment of the community it did feel like there was a lot of unnecessary tension because there was this really naive idea that if you just work hard enough and you do enough jokes per day per minute whatever maybe you're going to be successful and i guess that it just isn't the case and it? it just isn't the case but again interesting insight there from Bert. i would love to know your thoughts and opinions do you believe Bert? do you think um hard work is overrated or do you do you believe that hard work is a race or do you believe Kevin Hart and you think hard work is usually the primary reason why somebody is successful or isn't successful? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Anyway.